All right, hey everybody, welcome to the first video in my series where I'm going to start building an arcade cabinet. Um, so that's going to be like an actual arcade cabinet. Uh, the internals I'm going to use a retro pie in because I don't have like arcade boards sitting around, laying around. I don't feel like trying to track one down. Um, the goal here is really just to build an arcade cabinet that will you know, look like something you would find in an old arcade back in like the 90s or so, or sooner. Um, so I've gone ahead, I've designed a uh, 3D model that I'll show you here in a moment, and um, I think uh, I think it's going to turn out pretty well. Um, but you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, some of the things that I've already gotten a hold of is I've gotten a hold of some uh, some boards that I'll be using, uh, not wooden boards from this instance, kind of but some <laughs> circuit boards. So I've got uh, a few different types of uh, controllers to try out. Um, one is says it's a zero latency um, generic controller, pretty much that's uh, USB, so that'll work perfectly for the Pi, because I'll be able to connect that to the Retro Pi and uh, use the different joysticks that it has. I don't know if I really like the joystick that it has, though, so I'm going to look at some other things, too. But, um, yeah, we'll, we'll give it all a shot, and we'll see what we come up with. So, without further ado, I'll start off by uh, showing you the model. Alright, so here we have my uh, 3D model that I've sketched up using Blender. Um, so nothing too fancy. Uh, I'm also recording using my, uh, just recording the screen, so sorry for the uh, poor quality, but I would normally just, you know, do this with, you know, software, but in this case, this is just going to be as effective. So basically, I've got this 3D model that's going to um, serve as the basis for uh, my project. Now, the reason I did a 3D model at first was that um, a 3D model will help me do measurements and allow me to actually figure things out in a 3D space without actually spending the money to, or time to, to go ahead and figure out how I'm going to do it. So doing things like this, I can actually kind of break it up into chunks and figure out how I want to do things um, and actually do measurements. And the way I typically do that is if you look at the grid lines here, it might be a little bit hard to see, but um, the grid lines here, I can count those off in each small box is actually counting to me as one inch and then every larger box is going to be 10 inches so it allows you to quickly break it up and go okay 10 inches 20 inches 30 inches 40 inches 50 inches 60 inches 60 inches 5 feet and then whatever left over is the rest of that foot um, in this case I'm making the entire thing about six feet tall uh, a little bit more than that's about 73 inches I believe so uh, about, a, about an inch over six foot it also lets me uh, kind of figure out how my boards are going to go and figure out how many boards I'm going to need. Um, for this I'm going to use MDF because uh, it's nice and smooth and it'll give a nice, I can really easily countersink things into it. So it'll uh, it'll work really well. Um, and I can, it, MDF does really good with paint too. So <laughs> once I get a layer of paint on, black paint on it or whatever color I decide to do it, um, it'll be very easy to just paint it again. Or if I wanted to use like vinyl stickers I could do that also. Uh, but anyway, uh, so basically what I opted for was just a very standard looking model. Um, this little headboard up here is going to be about 7 inches tall, I think. And then, uh, yeah, once I did that, I went ahead and transferred all my actual measurements. So I started off with basically a rough measurement of how big I wanted things to be. So this is my generic roughness measurement. And then I took those to Blender here, um, made that size box, put all the put a couple of loop cuts in just to subdivide the spaces and then started moving things around to where I wanted them and then from there again I can count up the boxes and figure out you know like from here to here that's going to be so many inches down and so many inches over and that's what I'm going to use my jigsaw for is basically I'm going to measure off you know three inches down from the top of the board uh, well in this case two inches and then like five inches over uh, actually six inches over here and then you know do that cut and then basically just connect the lines for the most part, um, so yeah, it, it'll be uh, it'll be pretty easy to do, um, and I'll show the actual cutting and all that stuff to make it easier to understand by actually seeing it. And then anyway, once I got the Blender model made up, I was able to actually do write down all the measurements. So then there's my detailed model, <laughs> my detailed plan. So I've got a generic pl general plan here, and uh, the only thing I got left to do is um, gather all my materials together. So first thing I'll start off with is uh, showing off the buttons. All right, so I've got my uh, boards here that I'm going to use for the controllers, and I'm just going to show those off a little bit. Now, I can't remember exactly what company it was that made these. I have to look it up at some point. If you're very interested, just let me know, and I can let you know in the comments. Uh, but basically, um, these are zero latency boards that I've got here. So this board has a nice USB-C on it, 
that I'll be able to plug directly into the Retro Pi. Um, it also works with Windows, so that's that was kind of neat and good for a quick test, basically. So um, these buttons they came in two colors, so they had a red color button, and then the joystick. There's a blue one and a red one. Um, obviously, everything you could. Well, the joysticks, you could paint whatever color you want. I might make them black or something, I don't know. The buttons, they're clear and they have a LED in them. So they can be um, whatever color you want, basically. Um, the thing about these, though, is that they're a little bit... It's a little bit strange. Because uh, they did give me... So they give you two buttons um, that are going to be, you know, smaller this type size button. And then they give you... Six or eight eight of uh, these larger size so if you compare these two this one's a little bit thicker and beefier so I'm thinking that these two buttons will be start and select types of buttons and then uh, these buttons will also be a separate type uh, but the nice thing about these boards is that everything's kind of self-contained so you don't need to solder at all uh, even these little cables they came with little plastic uh, or maybe rubber I'm, they might, I'm not sure if they're heat sink or not but little shrouds that are on the wire that you just kind of sink down or push down over the top of the connectors once they're on or the pins so actually pretty pretty cool little design there um, one thing I don't like about it is this freaking joystick so <laughs> this joystick actually has a clicky sound to it that I'm not a big fan of um, and it's only uh, it's not like it's not analog. It's di it's a it's digital. So it's um you know it's either up, down, left, right, or you know a combination of those two. <laughs> so you're only going to be able to do one of uh, eight directions. So it's only an eight direction control. Um, that's that's okay for what you know how many use it for. Um, the clickiness I don't really like so much. Some people might like that. I'm not a big fan. Um, but other than that, um, everything's pretty easy to put on here. It gives you enough space for, uh, looks like 10 buttons, no, 11 buttons. So that's actually pretty good because that'll give you, uh, so it, it says 11 buttons if you're using, or it's 11 buttons, like this type of button. Um, but there's also other connectors on here, which I'm thinking I could probably use those for other things too. Because... I'm going to want to put on like a service button because I'm going to use this for like arcade. I'm going to put like MAME on here so the majority of the games are going to be arcade types of games and usually with an arcade game you have a service button on the inside as well as a button that adds like a coin. So um, I could just use like a select button because it's typically not a button that you'll see on an arcade so I may do that. Um, but the smaller buttons I'm going to use for start and select and then the larger buttons I'll use for the actual like playing buttons. So obviously it being retro pie that I'm going to be doing are using it's gonna be uh, I'm gonna try to use all the buttons I can um, but I really only need about six like actual play buttons and then like the start and select um, the rest I can actually figure out something else as far as like maybe a service button or fast forward or save state I'm not really sure how I'm gonna do it yet but I'll figure that out when I get there anyway um, next thing I gotta do is start gathering all my supplies so it's time to get to the store and get some MDF and uh, maybe some uh, maybe just some other pieces of random wood so I can use the supports. But see you on the next one.